All right, remember social theories. These are, these are concepts and ideas that sociologists use um, to, uh, to help answer questions about society. And each social, uh, social theory is kind of not in, uh, in its own an answer. It, almost, it takes pretty much all three theories, okay? To, to deal with most of societal issues. And that's kind of the whole, that's whole, the whole point of having more than one. Uh, we look at it sometimes through a functionalist uh, lens. We look at it through a conflict theory lens. And then sometimes we look at it as a symbolic interaction, okay? So all of these social theories are used um, and not one really can explain everything. Remember, you know, functionally, we can't say that our, the family structure was destroyed when women decided to go and work, okay? When, when women left the home and started to go get jobs, as early as the 1900s, they believed that society started to fall apart. Well, functionally, that doesn't make any sense because in, in, our, in a true society, people pick up the slack. For example, many times men just started to stay home and, and uh, to basically replace the woman who is off now working. Uh, we basically hire childcare uh, help. Um, we use daycare. There's all kinds of things that we have done functionally to help keep balance. But it does. But women leaving the women leaving the the home is did not destroy the family structure. That's that was the theory. Um, functionally, um, if that that theory was perfect. Um, it would mean that you know women got to get back home, you know. Otherwise, our families will, will, will you know will never be the same. Um, and we know that thought to be true. So we look at and we use functionalism to help explain things like, like say, um, a police, uh, a, a really good police force, and a really um, a really well respected law enforcement makes a town better. It makes people more more secure in where they live. Thus, functionally, they, they stay in balance. Okay, that's the idea. All right, so let's move ahead and just, I'll put the video play out and we'll watch this here. Put the sound on it. The first theory of society that I'll review is functionalism. This theory looks at how a society can exist and survive over time. Basically, functionalism states that a society is always trying to come to an equilibrium, trying to stabilize. The structures that make up a society, like institutions, will remain pretty constant and only change if absolutely necessary when the society loses stability. Remember that institutions are structures that fulfill the needs of society. There's an example of that in our society right now. The business institution has had to adapt to the huge online shopping boom, as online retail providers like Amazon draw more and more people away from retail stores down the street. Those stores have to find ways to attract people again so they will take the time to stop in and shop. But it takes a lot of energy to change, so the stores will only do what is absolutely necessary to get customers again. Right, so when you think of functionalism, think of the minor changes an institution makes to find a stable balance in the society. Only change to be functional again. The next thing... All right. So, so functionalism is basically that that first element. Okay. The second social theory we're going to look at is conflict theory. Conflict theory looks at the different uh, the different elements of society that that uh, oppose each other. Um, every society has opposition. Um, in many societies, it could be culturally. Sometimes it's based upon gender. Uh, sometimes it's based on status. Okay. For example, employee versus employer status. Um, black versus white issues. Male versus female issues. Rich versus poor. Those kinds of things are in what they call conflict theory. Many things can be can be. Uh, can be uh, talked or can be explained uh, in a, in the theory of conflict. Technological uh, versus uh, stagnant, meaning that if you don't get on board the technological revolution, you can be left behind. Thus, uh, conflict. There's a conflict there. So let's uh, go ahead and look at that example, really quick. Theory is conflict theory, which is just like it sounds. It focuses on how societies change and adapt over time through conflict. In any society, there is going to be conflicting viewpoints and beliefs, and people are going to take sides. Eventually, this is going to polarize the society where one group is happy with the status quo and another group wants change. This is a very fragile state for the society, and eventually both sides will have to come to some sort of agreement or else tear the society apart. The class struggle in 19th century Europe is an example of this process. 
The workers wanted change while the factory owners were happy with the way things were. The two opposing positions were merged to create a new society where the workers had slightly more power than before and the factory owners had slightly less, and everyone was content, if maybe not ecstatic, about the outcome. Okay, so in conflict theory, you have two opposing sides at odds with each other that eventually lead to the creation of a new synthesized society. So conflict theory. So let's let go ahead and I just gotta, I gotta do a little bit of adjusting here. My screen's a little messed up on the, on the, my OBS. There we go. Let's take that down there. Let's put that in the middle. Maybe put the, all right, let's put that, that down there. There we go. Okay. So number two, conflict, conflict theory. Now, number three, uh, symbolic interactionism. Okay. Um, sometimes they change the wording on this one. Then, and, and in some uh, some so sociological studies, there's actually a fourth theory. But I try to I try to keep it simple. Uh, I try to keep it on these uh, these three. Conflict creating a new society. Next, we have the theory of social constructionism, which looks at what a society is rather than how it exists or changes. In social constructionism, everything is created from the minds of the society. There's an agreement that something has meaning and value that the thing doesn't actually have intrinsically. One of the most prevalent examples today is money. It has no value on its own. It's just paper or metal or numbers in a computer. But as a society, we have agreed to give it a specific value, and that agreement actually helps to shape the society itself. So when you think of social constructionism, remember that everything only has value because we agree it has value. We construct the world around us. All right. So a lot of the times a, when they create these extra categories, social constructionism, it's really like symbolic interaction, uh, meaning that since something has value, uh, it symbolically has value. Um, we all recognize it that way. Some people look at uh, some people look at things differently, um, but with with certain elements of our society, it's agreed upon that, for example, a stop sign or a red uh, sign that says, that says stop is, uh, is universally looked upon the same way. Just like certain colors are signs of, uh, of, uh, of like caution, um, there's a sign, uh, there are, there are uh, universal symbols. Uh, so what they did, I believe, in the, in the cr creation of social construct theory is just they, they broke up symbolic interaction. So I believe that's the fourth one they're going to do, but I usually don't separate social construct um, uh, away from it. I just kind of leave it together, okay, in one, uh, in one idea. The final social theory here is symbolic interactionism. This one is kind of different than the other theories because it puts a lot of focus on the individual and how they behave. It is based around the idea of the meanings we give to things. Like, to me, a tree could be a source of shade, whereas for someone else, it could be the home to spiders and ants. People are created by their society. They act based on their past experiences in their lives and the meanings they have given things. But not everyone gives the same meaning to everything. That tree could mean 10 different things to 10 different people. And even if you just look at one person, a tree can have multiple meanings, and those meanings can even change over time. All right, so with symbolic interaction, you can use a lot of examples. There's a lot of metaphors that you can use. Um, probably one of the strongest ones is that if I went up, and I've done this before in class, if I went up and drew a swastika, okay, um, a, symbol, a symbolic interaction basically occurs because it creates basically a negative connotation it, immediately when it's being seen because that's what society has done with it. It has basically ch turned that symbol into a symbol of, of, of course, anger and hate. Um, there's a, there are other things that create the same symbolic interaction. Okay, now I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna switch gears and I don't like to connect these two, but the American flag um, creates symbolic interaction. It creates emotion um, uh, by its by its symbol, its symbolism. Um, other things. There's uh, there are there are there are faces in history. There are um, there are places that create symbolic interaction. Um, for example, the word uh, the the place that is synonymous. I, I bring up the Holocaust a lot because there's a lot of very strong symbolic interaction when it comes to that. 
Um, but uh, the, 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 there's actually a, an iconic picture of the, of the concentration camp Auschwitz. And when you see it, people immediately recognize it symbolically for what it means. It means uh, the, the, uh, it is a symbol of the persecution of the Jews from, from that same time, same time period. So all my examples are historic, but there's other symbolic interaction. And I gave you some, I said that a stop sign, a universal signs for, for caution. Um, there's u universal signs for, uh, uh, for like walking symbols, uh, there's arrows and different things that we use in our society to organize ourselves. Some of it is universally uh, recognized. Most street signs are universally recognized, meaning that the colors are the same in any other, uh, in the language might be different on the sign, but the color associated with, for example, green means go, red means stop, okay? Yellow means caution, um, and it's universal language okay here we go the last little bit to help uh, kind of close this off and then the meanings we give things is based on our past experiences in society and those meanings and our interpretations create our future society to put it in a phrase symbolic interactionism says that we interact with the world to give it meaning so to sum up this summary we have functionalism, looking at the stability of the society, conflict theory, looking at how the society changes, social constructionism, discovering how things are given value, and finally, symbolic interactionism, learning how individuals act. Go ahead and shut that down. All right. Is a so if we go into our the ideas of Emil Durkheim. Right, shut that off. So if we go into our our material here, um, there there are like I said, there are two other videos that will help you with that. One looks at race and conflict when it comes to conflict theory. Um, the other one in the in our example, our class example that I use uh, is gender conflict. Okay, so these are these are really good examples. So if you want to see those, I'll see if we have time to. I might play a little bit of each one of those. Um, and then the symbolic interaction one, uh, it says contact, uh, contact with people, things, and ideas. Um, but there's a video right here also that's just specific uh, that will cover symbolic interaction in just a little bit more detail. Um, I think this one's the one about the athletes, I believe. I just want to check it out here really quick. Um, see if it's... Uh, yeah, I got it. Uh, I think that's the one where it's... I think that's where he cover it. Oh, hey, welcome. No, that's a different one. All right, but um, anyway, that should cover that. But if you if you want to, uh, you can check out any of these other resources, okay? I suggest you do if you get confused. And if you want to, of course, the one we just watched was Conflict uh, Concepts Review, okay? So that's that, all right? Okay, so that's all I had to cover today. So those are just three, f uh, three filters that we use to help us understand sociology better, okay? Um, we look through lenses. We look through uh, a lens that helps us kind of uh, conceptualize and to compartmentalize what we see. Um, we do it with everything. We call it a tool. Some people call those f uh, filters. Sometimes they call them a tool. It's just a method we use to explain things. Okay. All right. That's it.